guys, I am trying out that um, new phone holder. If you guys watched my FabFitFun video, I got um, as an add-on, I got this little C-shaped thing that holds the phone. And um, I have that on the dashboard. That's why the angle is different. It's a little weird. Um, but it could also fall <laughs> because the magnet that it sticks to, it's actually a really strong magnet, but the sticky part on the magnet is not sticking very well to the dashboard. In fact, when I try to lift the, like take my phone out of it, it, it just, it comes unstuck from the dashboard. It's, it's kind of hanging in there well for now. If I hit a bump, I'm sure <laughs> it will not be the case, but yeah, I've been trying to find the right kind of holder for car chat kind of things. And I think what we're going to have to do is find some sort of disc to put it on, to hook it, hook it to, and a disc that will somehow hang on to the, really grip the dashboard. I The best one I had, sorry I'm going on about this, but the best one I had was one that stuck to the windshield, and it was all last winter that I had it. And then we went down to, I think we went down to Phoenix or something, it was hot, and the little rubber thing that was sticking to the windshield just completely melted and the whole thing just fell off in a goopy heap. <laughs> and that was the end of that. So I'm trying out something new. So far so good with this, except that it's it's not going to be able to stay this way. It'll eventually start falling off the dash. So today, um, John has been off all week. His birthday was on um, Sunday. And so he took the week off. And so we've just been, you know, he, he really took the week off just so he could get some stuff done around the yard and the house and stuff like that. And so today, we, um, well, yesterday my brother and his wife from Florida came into town. They're staying at my mom's house this time. And so tonight we are having dinner together at our house. And then tomorrow is my mom's birthday and we're all getting together over at my mom's house. And then on Saturday night, we're all going out to dinner somewhere together. So we're taking Monica to day camp and I just remembered that John and I left at the same time. We're actually getting his windows tinted on his car and we got mine done yesterday just so that the cars, you know, we have such intense heat here in Arizona that we have to do that. And so yesterday we got my car's windows done and then um so we're he left we left at the same time and the plan is that you know we're dropping his car off and then getting in one car and then taking monica to day camp and i just realized that i am already driving to day camp and not to where john's car is so i need to um maneuver myself over there to pick him up otherwise he's going to be stuck over there so so yeah, we're just gonna run around, get to go to the grocery store, pick up what we're gonna do for dinner tonight, and um, yeah, that's kind of kind of the day. It's really the next few days are gonna be mostly about hanging out with my brother and sister-in-law, which will be nice because you know they live on the other side of the country. Never seen them advertise. Mm -hmm. I think they just go by word of mouth. They just bring the best tools. Yeah, they're out there, right? And okay, let's see if you guys can see this. Get my windshield. Oops, that's <laughs> this is John's car. I don't know how to make the windshield wipe there. Do you see all that? Did you see that powder? Do you see this yellow stuff here? This is the pine pollen. Okay, let me turn this around. Sorry about the angle of this thing. John's always moving the, um, the phone holder in his truck. So the pine pollen typically falls in May, like early May. Yeah, early to mid-May. And it's awful every year. You know, it's just, there's just tons of yellow stuff everywhere and blows everywhere and gets on everything and people with allergies have problems and... Um, I, I don't really have problems with it too much in that way, but 
anyway, um, it's just a mess. And yesterday, we, uh, my mom and my brother and his wife came over and we were going to um, sit out on the deck for dinner, which we did do. But I took a blower and went out on the deck and blew p pine pollen off the deck three times yesterday. And there was stuff blowing every time that would resettle like the table that I blew it off of, you know, later on. Next thing I know, it, there's yellow all over it. And some years are worse than others with how much pine pollen there is. And this seems to be kind of a bad, kind of a bad one. So let's see the birthday lady. Let's get all Mom's, the shrimp over what here. Are you doing? With, with the I'm just and filming like you for my, for my vlog. Hi, hey, so it's Saturday morning and our neighborhood is having a community garage sale, meaning that the, the homeowners association advertised this. Um, but I, some people just came by on bikes and they said that there's only like three people, three houses that are even participating in this, which is unfortunate. And I was kind of debating whether we should do it or not, or just take what we have and dump it off at Goodwill. But we have one large ticket item, which is a, a mattress that's been in our guest bedroom. Um, and and then two kind of, well, 20, well, actually three $20 items, and it would be nice if we could sell those. And everything else is like a dollar here, a dollar there. So we'll see how it goes. We had a birthday party for my mom last night, and I'll show you the birthday cake from that, and did a little karaoke. And uh, so that was, that was kind of fun. Ate more meat than I have had probably in the entire year. We had steak shrimp, scallops, um, and then we had other stuff, mushrooms and corn and um, uh, vegetables and dip, and it was amazing food, but when I got home last night, it was just like, Ugh. <laughs> haven't eaten that much in a very long time. Okay, see here, so we've got some clothes of John John's and mine, and this is um, this is actually a dog door that fits in a sliding glass door. We had that when we lived in the apartment, and then <clears throat> I have that summer set of dishes and some Christmas stuff and tablecloths and cookbooks, and then oh well, there's a couple of kitchen things and John's cowboy boots. So I don't have a lot. I mean, I probably sold twenty dollars worth of stuff. Look at all this pollen in the driveway. It's just everywhere, just yellow powder. There's a nice little collection of it. This is right next to my neighbor's driveway. I mean, just we just get tons of pollen. Just this yellow powder covering everything. And it's all from the pine trees. And it fell late this year, which is crazy. But we are a few hours into the garage sale. We've made a grand total of like $35. <laughs> I just counted it and we're not getting too many people around so this may have been a big waste of time but i guess it would be enough to buy dinner what did they eat yeah they ate all my red hot cocoa Ugh. hey you guys um I'm taking Monica to day camp and I always do <clears throat> a car chat, although I don't think I did one last week when I was driving her there. Um, yeah, so I should be finding out today, you know, I've been telling you guys about that art show that my mom and I are gonna do and we, we still don't know if that show is on. Apparently the board was gonna have a meeting yesterday to decide, that, I mean, their last meeting, they decided they were gonna move forward and then and then for some reason they're trying to decide if they're going to move forward. So I don't even know if I've been doing all this stuff for nothing. But, you know, if, if, if there's no show this year, there will be one next year. And so I'll have everything ready and I won't be, you know, crazy busy trying to get it all finished. So another little fiasco that's been going on is with my computer. I have been having trouble with the keys sticking. And I thought it was just because, you know... I've had it for three and a half years and I've and it's gotten dirty and you know crumbs or whatever have gotten in there and um, but actually I, I took it over to Best Buy last week and they said that you know sometimes um, sometimes 
the keyboards just go out. And so it was like doubling letters and and sometimes I would hit a key and nothing would happen at all and I'd have to push really hard and then three letters would come. And so when you're when you're a writer for a living, that is a little bit <laughs> difficult. So I kind of put up with it until I was finished with my last freelance project, took it over there <clears throat> and I'm never going to go through Best Buy again. I'm going to go through Apple in the future. But they sent it off and um, just put down that it needed the, the keyboard replaced. <clears throat> and then I got a phone call or I got an email from Best Buy saying, you know, contact our customer service. We want to, we have an estimate for you and we need your approval to, to complete the, the repair. So when I contacted them, they said, you know, it's going to be $600 ouch um i had been kind of quoted 300 as an estimate earlier and um they said it, it, they're going to replace the the keyboard and something with the video and i said there was nothing wrong with video my computer was totally fine except for the keyboard and they said well it doesn't light up like when when we turn it on it doesn't light up and I was like well it was a three and a half year old computer like did you charge it <laughs> it can't go very long without dying you know if I don't keep it plugged in then by the you know within you know a few hours the thing goes dead so are they gonna charge me for something just because it needed to be <laughs> plugged in so anyway so I was planning to go to Best Buy today. I, I was calling all day yesterday to the local Best Buy and they don't answer their phone. They, they send you to corporate, which is frustrating. And so I was planning to go today and then I was checking email today. Um, I've been using John's laptop and they said that they fixed it and it's gonna be sent back to me soon. So I have no idea if I'm paying for what I didn't ask to be fixed or if they just fixed the, I don't have any idea, but um, yeah, in the future, I am I am not going to use Best Buy. I've had repairs done or assistance from Apple in the past and they've always done a really good job, but um, yeah, I thought I, I, I kind of thought when I took it over there that maybe they fix computers locally which is not the case. They send it out and, and um, kind of crazy. But at this point, I, I've been without my computer for a week. I am going to be without my computer for, you know, until it gets back to me. So at least another few days, at least until the taste Thursday. So at least until next week. And so I kind of, I need my computer back. And it's just amazing, isn't it? How much stuff we how much how dependent we are I mean, so i'm making another batch of my overnight quinoa on on my busy being jen channel i have a video called what i eat in a day plant-based and uh, i really do love this overnight quinoa i make it in batches so then i have breakfast or if i want to have it for lunch i have it ready for a week john likes it too um each jar is actually two servings it looks like the jar you know, like you could eat this and that would be a good for breakfast, but it's super filling with oatmeal and chia seeds and quinoa and you put fruit on it and everything. It's really filling. And so just to have a jar is all I need to have to fill up on it. And so uh, I thought I'd just kind of show you what, what we're doing here. I'm almost finished cooking up the quinoa and it's just absorbing the last of the water. It's, it's already bloomed there. And so then I have, um, it, it may be five, it may be six jars of this that I'll be making. We'll see how much quinoa. So it's a third of a cup of quinoa, and then there's a half a cup of oatmeal, two tablespoons of chia seeds, a pinch of salt that you can see in there. And then I'll be adding a cup of almond milk and a little bit of uh, maple syrup. And I'm trying to think, is that it? It's also a little bit of vanilla extract. You stir that all together. The oatmeal is not cooked. The only part of this that is cooked is the quinoa. You stir it all up, put a lid on it, and stick it in the fridge. Definitely over one night, but you can leave it in there for a week while you're getting around to eating all of these. And 
then or, or more. I mean, obviously, this if I if John didn't help me eat this, it'd be ten days in the fridge before I got through eating a half a day, and that would be fine. Uh, but then when I serve it, I warm it up. You can eat it cold, but I warm it up and put some fresh or fresh or frozen, like thawed out frozen fruit. Like berries is what I use, a combo of blueberries, strawberries, and raspberries. And then I like to put some nuts on top, like pecans or something like that. So yummy. Okay, so I ended up making six because I had more quinoa left. Really the rule of thumb on cooking quinoa is that it doubles in size. So if you do um, a cup of quinoa, and each of these requires a third. So if you do three thirds um, or a cup of dried quinoa, when you cook it, it will end up being twice that, six thirds. And so there's enough, you know, for six, for six of these. And you can see this is the last one I just mixed up and it seems really, really runny. When you come over here to one of the first ones I did, it's getting thicker already. This will definitely thicken up to a consistency of an oatmeal or um, a cream of wheat kind of a thing. And because the oatmeal will absorb the almond milk and the chia seeds actually get kind of gelatinous when they are in liquid. But since the chia seeds are mixed throughout, it, you know, it doesn't taste gelat well it, there's not a gelatinous texture at all in there because it's all mixed throughout so super yummy i'm just gonna put lids on these things and then put them in the fridge hey you guys john has another show tonight at the museum club again so i got my little i don't know if you can see this very well my little black cowboy hat and um you know i was this is lightweight it's it's pretty warm here today so um so i want to wear something that's not going to make me um sweat too terribly i have to show you something in my cowboy boots okay so. okay so here are my cowboy boots and you're saying okay they're cowboy boots but this is what i think is fun about them look they're just mules and I love wearing these in the summertime because cowboy boots can just seem so hot or not seem, just feel really hot. And so I'm wearing jeans as it is. And so um, I like to wear these in the summertime. I got them years ago at Dillard's. I don't even remember how long ago, maybe 12 years ago, but you know, cowboy boots you can keep for a long time. So that completes my outfit. <laughs> It is 11 o'clock and I have to sing tomorrow, so I figured I'm going home. John probably won't be getting home until like 1. I don't know how he's going to get up and play in the morning. But anyway, it was a weird night. We had probably just as many people as we did the last show they had here. But did like no energy. People just weren't dancing very much. It was just kind of strange. Hi, guys. Boy. I'm just noticing all these clouds in the sky, which you may think, well, why is that a big deal? But um, our monsoon usually starts around 4th of July, and it's been acting like it wants to start m the monsoon early. And there's big clouds, too. And I checked Weather Channel this morning. It did not say anything about chances of rain, but um, yeah, it just has been behaving like it wants to rain. I hope it does, because we just have this gross yellow pollen laying everywhere. Not that pollen is gross, but when there's tons of it, I probably sneezed a total of 10 times this morning. And I'm not allergic to pine, but anybody, you know, dust around your face would, you know, cause you to sneeze. So I just can't wait for the rain to just come and get the rest of the pollen out of the trees and wash away the pollen that's laying everywhere yeah anyway I am running a couple of errands the first is just dropping off a, a bottle of lotion that I ordered from Amazon that showed up with the pump broken so I'm returning it and um, so I just have to stop at UPS to drop it off 
And then the more exciting thing is that I'm going over to Best Buy to pick up my laptop. Because I Yay, I'm pretty sure they have it. They had to go back to the warehouse and, and check, but I just saw a guy come back with some boxes, and I think one of them's my computer. Okay, you guys, I got my computer back. Super excited. But I'm dumbfounded because it was free. Hold on a second. All right, this is so weird. So when I dropped my computer off there a week and a half ago, they had told me that it was gonna be $85 to ship it out. Sorry, I'm putting this on. Um, so they told me it was gonna be $85 to ship it out. And then, but it only came to $34. And so that the guy, the agent said, um, said, yeah, it's, um, for some reason, it's only coming up as $34. And I thought, well, <laughs> they're probably going to charge me like, you know, that amount in one, uh, you know, to send it out and then they'll charge me again for coming back. So no big deal. It had to be fixed. It had to go. So anyway, they get my computer. It was in the warehouse and he's, and now this is the thing they had told me over the phone that well originally they said if it was just the keyboard it was going to be about three hundred dollars which was fine with me because you know my only other option is to pay four thousand dollars for a new computer so um you know that's fine but when i talked to them they told me it was going to be for that video issue that it was going to be six hundred dollars and that's where i was kind of throwing a minor tantrum, not a tantrum, but I was, get, I was pushing back a little on that saying, I didn't ask for that. So the guy gets my computer and I said, can you tell me about what this video thing was? And he said, well, they ran a diagnostic and it came up with an error code for some video hardware thing that they had to, repl that they had to replace. You know, I, I guess that means that I would eventually have had some problems with my computer had they not fixed that, but how do you actually know? Um, so I said, well, okay, you know, I was just like, I, I'm not ready to argue. So I said, so what's the damage on this? And uh, he said, uh, it looks like they're refunding you $34.95, which is what I paid to send it out. And I said, what? I said, no, 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 no. I said, I mean, I, I'm happy to take my computer back for free, but the, I, I'm, I'm certain I have to pay something. And, uh, and I said, and I certainly don't want you to get in trouble for not correctly charging me for this. And so, so then he went back and he talked to his manager and it came back out and they said, it looks like Apple covered it. And I do not have an Apple care protection plan anymore. I know I did. Um, at the beginning, but I don't now. Uh, haven't for a couple of years, and <laughs> I don't know what happened. But I tried really hard to pay, <laughs> and it looks like they just ended up refunding me anything I paid at all, like sending it out, the shipping. It, you know, you always have to pay for that. I paid nothing. I paid $34.95 last, a week and a half ago, and they refunded it back to my credit card, and I paid nothing else, and I have a, a fully functional computer. Seriously, what a blessing is that? I have no idea. I mean, I really don't, you know, I'm the kind of person that, well, this happened to me not long ago, maybe a couple months ago. I was, um, shopping at the grocery store and one of the things I put in my cart was a thing of maple syrup the real kind so it was like $16 for this container of maple syrup and I had put it in the the part of the basket that you know where you can set a kid but I had my purse in there and I had set it there and when I went through the checkout I went through self checkout and I got everything you know bagged up and everything paid left went out to my car and was putting my groceries in my car when I realized 
that that thing of maple syrup was still in the cart and I realized that I had not paid for it. And here I was out of the store. I could have just driven away, but I would have lived with guilt. <laughs> so I went back inside the store to customer service and I said, I um, I didn't pay for this. And, and I said, and I'm in a hurry. I don't have time to, to buy this right now. So here, sorry, you're going to have to put it back on the shelf for me. And, um, so yeah, I just can't, I just, I have, I would have a very hard time taking something that I knew, you know, if somebody forgot to charge me for something, I would have to, I just have to, I would have to go back and pay for it. I just can't, that would just, I would be wrecked with guilt over that. So yeah, so I'm not, I really was asking the kid, like, are you, um, a kid. He's a college student. I, he graduated from college. I had a conversation with him last time when I was in there. And, uh, I, you know, I didn't want him to get in trouble. I asked him to check with his manager and I ended up not having to pay. So <laughs> I feel very weird about this. I feel very weird about accepting this, but I am glad to have my computer back. Okay. So I've been thinking about this some more. Um, you know what I'm thinking because they said that Apple covered it. I'm wondering, cause I had mentioned to you before that I had read something about the keyboards on this version of the MacBook pro being, um, faulty or something like that. I'm wondering if Apple covered it and covered the, that, whatever that video card thing was too, because maybe those were two things in my version of the MacBook Pro that were found to be faulty that they're not charging customers for. Maybe they had so many problems with those that they're repairing them for people for free. And maybe if I had gone, and this is what I'll do in the future. I went to Best Buy because I thought Best Buy, like maybe they were able to repair Apple computers as it turns out, they just sent it out to their Apple certified people, I guess, that are part of Best Buy. I don't know. But um, I could have just called Apple and they would have sent me a box. I've done this in the past years ago. They would have sent me a box. I would have packed up my computer. They would have sent somebody out to my house to pick it up. They're really amazing with their customer service. And I imagine that if that had happened and I was dealing directly with Apple, they would have explained to me why they weren't charging me for this repair. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing because I can't, I can't even imagine. And they're not even charging me to ship it out there, I guess, because, you know, if they're feeling like they created a faulty product in one of their versions, this is a 2017 computer. So, um, in that version of the laptop of the MacBook pro, they, maybe they just start feeling like customers shouldn't have to pay for any part of the repair because it was their fault. But that's just not something you hear about <laughs> these days. You know, you just don't hear about companies accepting responsibility for something like that and not, not charging you. Because I would have paid it. I would have paid for it, but I'm happy I didn't have to. Mm -hmm.